we're going to talk about slips, stains, and washes. And we're going to talk about how to use those and when to use those. The common material that all of these decorating mediums have in common is a ceramic stain, which is a mixture of ceramic oxides and coloring metal oxides that have been heated, quenched in water, and then ground up into a fine powdered pigment. Okay, here are a few examples just so you can see what a stain looks like. It truly is just ground up pigment. So, we mix these in different percentages into slips, stains, or washes rather, and underglazes. When it comes to slip, a slip is just clay. It's a thinned out version of clay, so a liquefied clay. So different from the plastic clay in the bag that you use to sculpt with or throw on the pottery wheel. So I like to keep mine the consistency of pudding. So then that way, if I wanna apply it more thick, then I can do that. If I want a thinner version, I'll just pull out a scoop, add a little water and thin it out to put it in a applicator tool or to just get a different look with it. I start with a white clay base, so a white clay recipe, and then I take that powder recipe and I add water, and then I add a percentage of a ceramic stain so I can get colored slip. When it comes to using slip, because it is clay, it has to go on your piece before the bisque. So your piece either has to be wet or leather hard. You don't want to apply it to bone dry clay or bisque wear. So colored slip before the bisque when your clay is wet or leather hard. So this is colored slip that I applied through a stencil onto a piece of newspaper and then transferred it onto a tile. So when you use slip, you're gonna get texture because slip is clay. So you're applying more clay onto clay. So there is a raised component here, a texture. And this does not have a clear glaze over it. This is just colored slip put onto a porcelain tile. This is the same process with colored slip. So I know it's probably hard to see this, but if you could feel this, you would know, so you'll just have to trust me, but this is raised here. So this is not gonna be flush with your surface. It's not like a glaze. It's not gonna melt and move. It is going to be a bit raised because you are applying more clay to your clay form. This one has a clear glaze over it. Okay, so let's talk about underglaze now. So the underglazes that we use are all manufactured by different companies. And so you want to make sure that you read the label on whatever underglaze that you're using to make sure you're using it appropriately. So this is an Amico velvet underglaze. And the nice thing about underglazes is they have more frit than clay. So because of that, this can be applied to greenware or bisqueware. And it's gonna have a different consistency. So you can see this is much more fluid, much more liquidy. And sure, we could make this slip more fluid and more liquidy by adding more water and stirring it well. So let me show you a few examples of pieces that were decorated with underglazes. This was made by my friend 
Ashley, she goes by Ash or Mud Ash. And these are all different colors of underglaze that have been applied to the surface of a darker clay body and there's no glaze put over them. So when you put a glaze, a clear glaze over it, it's just gonna make them more shiny and possibly make those colors pop a bit more and become more vibrant. Here's another piece of hers with a bunch of underglazes. Lidded box that I showed you before. Also, I did the same kind of print technique, but instead of using slip through the stencil, I put underglaze through the stencil onto newspaper and transferred it. So you can still see you get a similar design as you do with the slip, but this is flush to the surface. It's not raised like the slip is. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about washes. In the Phoenix College Studio, we just call them stains. So you'll see a whole textile wall of the different colored stains and what they look like at cone six and what they look like at cone 10 and what they look like with glaze on top of them and what they look like without glaze on top of them. So a wash or just a stain, all it is is that pigment, that ceramic stain and water. And then we at Phoenix College add a little Gersley borate as an additional flux to help that stain adhere to our clay form. So you can see it's a much more liquid state. So it's easier to mix a wash with a brush than a spoon. So you can really mix up that material because the stain in the Gersley borate will want to settle to the bottom. And so when it comes to using stains, you're gonna get a much different look than when you use an underglaze or a slip. With an underglaze, you can get a much more concentrated look. And with a slip, you can get a more concentrated look as well. Slips are usually gonna be very dry in appearance because you're just painting on clay, just a colored clay. So it's gonna be dry like most clays are. You can see on some of these that Ash used, even without a glaze, they have a little bit of a sheen. So it all depends. You're gonna to wanna to test the underglazes you're using to see what happens. You're gonna get more of a acrylic paint look with an underglaze, unless you thin it out and use it more like a wash. With a wash, you're gonna get more of like a watercolor effect. So this piece, was painted with stain. So you can see where I pulled back the color in some areas. So it's a bit more concentrated and a little less concentrated in some areas. So that was all done with stain, just a deep dark blue stain on a porcelain tile. Then this was all painted with stains as well. But you can see you can really pull it back and get that watercolor effect. Or if you have something with texture, so I have these lines that are carved, I painted on a color and then wiped it back with my sponge and that stain fell into those lines. So you can see the color within that line is more concentrated. And then I pulled it back by thinning it out with water to give it more of a watercolor effect on the surface. So that's a really fun thing with stains, is if you have something that has a deep texture or you stamped it or you carved it, it's really fun to paint on a stain and then pull it back, wipe it back so it falls into those cracks. You can do the same thing with an underglaze as well. Anything that has a recessed line, you could also paint on an underglaze and wipe it back and have it fall into those cracks. Another cool thing you can do with stains is you can apply them on top of a glaze. So a wash, I keep calling it a stain because that's what we call it, a wash or a stain can be applied before the bisque, so to greenware. After the bisque, it can be applied on right onto the bisqueware 
and then you could put a glaze over it or a transparent or clear glaze over it. Or after it's been bisque, you can dip your piece into glaze and you can paint with washes on top of the glaze. And that is what I did here. So for this piece, I dipped it in a white satin glaze and then I painted flowers on top of that glaze with the wash and then I dipped it in a clear glaze just to give it more of a sheen. Same here, only with this one, I didn't dip the clear glaze over the whole thing. I put the white glaze on and when you put this white glaze on, it's nice because it's like gessoing a canvas. You get a really nice white surface. And then I painted with a brush, painted with these washes or these stains, painted a design on top of that white glaze. And then I sprayed with, this, with the spray gun in the spray booth, just a fine coat of the clear, just to give it a little bit more of a pearly sheen. So on this, I dipped my bisque cup in white glaze, then I painted a design with the wash, and then I took a scraffito tool, which is basically this tool, that's a needle tool with a little tiny ball on the end, I think it's also called a stylus, and I just scratched into this and scraffito, scraffito means to scratch. Um, so I scratched into the wash that I applied and revealed that white glaze. So I didn't scratch so hard that I got to the clay body. I just scratched through that stain into that white glaze to create that design there. So I think that's all the examples. Let's have a quick recap here. So colored slip has to be used before the bisque. So either on your wet clay or your leather hard clay, not on bone dry and not after your piece has been bisque. Underglaze, read the label, because some underglazes might not recommend using them before the bisque. But the this Amico uh, velvet underglaze and most of them, but do check, you can use before bisque and after bisque. The wash or the stain can be used before the bisque, so greenware state. After the bisque, you could paint it on and put a glaze over it, or you could dip your piece in a glaze and paint it on top of glaze. One thing to note when you're working with washes before bisque, just be careful handling it after the bisque because the wash does get really powdery. Your design could be easily smudged or you could transfer fingerprints of the stain or the wash where you don't want it. So just, you have to use a little more caution if you use this before the bisque, but that's it. Okay, thanks you guys, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.